Recently, I made a video called 10 Reasons You're Not Getting Better at Guitar. And then afterwards, I tweeted, what's one way you've gotten better at guitar? And you guys had a lot of really great responses. So these are 50 ways to get better at guitar according to you guys. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Music is Win if you want to get in on the next crowdsourced video like this. You guys always have a lot of great suggestions and comments, so I appreciate all of your feedback. By the way, speaking of support, you'll notice I have this lovely guitar in my hands from American Musical Supply. This is an exclusive run of PRS CE24 models, and as you can see, it is a satin finish. Not only on the body, but on the neck as well. It's super smooth. I've always wanted a satin PRS guitar and I finally have one. So thank you to American Musical Supply for providing it. Like I mentioned, they're doing an exclusive run of these satin finishes on the CE24s. They're actually a hundred bucks less than the gloss finish CE24s. If you don't like fingerprints on your guitar, this is the answer. And for somebody who films a lot, I always get so irked when I film a video and I didn't remember to clean my guitar and there's just fingerprints all over it. I'm like, no, I've ruined everything. And I really love this neck. It's, it's sort of like reminds me of a Batmobile. It's like a, all stealthy looking. Highly recommend this guitar if you're on the market for a new one. And the CEs have the bolt on neck. So some people have a certain proclivity toward that. So again, check out American Musical Supply. They are open and shipping every single day despite all the craziness in the world right now. So even if you don't need a guitar, go grab some cables or any other gear that you need. Check out the link down below. Now let's get to 50 ways you can get better at guitar. <laughs> quarantine a very timely answer depending on when you're watching this video currently it is March 30th when I'm recording this 2020 and we are all locked down for the foreseeable future so certainly being isolated without choice is a way to get better at the guitar I wouldn't necessarily say it's my first choice. It's definitely uh, the old lock yourself in a room mentality. Distancing myself from the guitar community. It's a wonderful instrument, but there's a lot of toxicity that can surround it. So I guess this means like not letting what other people say get to you. I guess that's good life advice, not just guitar. I don't necessarily have any issues with the guitar community or social media in particular. I think all of social media has its uh, trolls and it also has a lot of good people too. Uh, I actually think the music community and the guitar community has a lot more good people than annoying people or bad people compared to just regular life. So maybe somebody said something to this person rubbed them the wrong way and had them form this opinion, which that sucks, but I can say from my perspective, and I have a pretty good perspective because I'm forced to be in social media, uh, I think there's a lot more good than bad out there. And most of the good is you guys. Learning how to play the piano. This completely changed the way I approached the guitar. It illuminated the fretboard. Excellent advice. Learning to play any instrument other than the guitar is going to translate to the guitar in many different ways. But in particular, the piano, I think, is the ultimate instrument. From my perspective as a teacher, often the easiest way to convey various concepts when it comes to music theory is by using a keyboard or a piano to help the student visualize whatever it is you're showing them. And how many guitar players do you know who all say the same thing? Oh, well, I started playing piano when I was like eight. I always look back at what I've already accomplished. That should drive you. There was a time that the only thing I could do on a guitar was to hold it. <laughs> if you keep in mind where you were and where you wanna go, you most definitely practice and keep on getting better. Yeah, this is great advice. I almost never look back at like previous videos that I made and like, man, that was a good video. I'm really happy at how that one turned out and just like gaze at it and like, yeah, that's great. I'm always on to the next one. So I have to take this advice, but especially when it comes to the guitar, the best way to put this into action, take the guitar and flip it over the wrong way and try and play anything. My hands are very confused right now. This is where you started when you first picked up a guitar, you couldn't play anything. You could just do something like this. Now, flip it over.
I bought Guitar Super System. Well, I can't argue with that. I did hear it's the greatest guitar learning platform in the entire world. And as the creator of Guitar Super System, I can assure you, I am not biased at all. The Boss RC3, no joke, forced me to hear how bad I was. Timing and dynamics got so much better. Absolutely, a loop pedal. I cannot recommend a loop pedal enough. The Boss RC3 is great. The TC Electronic Ditto is great. If you can use a looper in your practice, timing, dynamics, all these things will be on display. If you can loop yourself and feel when you're out of time and play back your loop and be like, ooh, I gotta fix that, then it will become fixed if you're consistent with it. So highly, highly recommend a loop pedal in all areas of practice. Rocksmith. I have still never tried Rocksmith. Probably the one guitar learning method I have absolutely zero opinion, positive or negative on. The other guitar learning platforms like the YouTube ads that you see, those are really good advertisements. They're not necessarily good products, but Rocksmith I think is on a different level than those because it has obviously the console element, which is kind of built into the culture of gaming, which I think is important. And I've just generally heard interesting things and enough comments about it that I think I'm gonna have to buy it and give it a shot and take you guys along with me. Stay tuned for that down the road. Watching Russian folk dancing. Okay, I don't know if this is a joke, but I actually do think consuming different forms of art can relate back to becoming a better guitar player because who knows what you're gonna get inspired by. Maybe it's like a painting. All of a sudden hear this amazing soundscape in your head that you never would have heard had you not gazed upon that painting. Maybe it's the music in the Russian folk dancing culture that all of a sudden spurs something on. It comes back to the being open to multiple genres of music. Maybe the dancing itself moved you to uh, be compelled to create some masterpiece of musical composition. Russian folk dancing. Learn music you hate. Multiple reasons to do so. Lots of hired gun players are well versed across the spectrum and will make you better. Does anyone really think that they all love the music they're being paid to play? Sometimes a job is just a job. I have personal experience with this one. After college, I joined a cover band and it was like one of those new country, Jason Aldean, that kind of area of country music. And I learned that there's actually some pretty killer guitar stuff in that music. The lyrics are god awful, but the music itself is pretty fun to play as a guitar player. And there's a lot of drop tuning stuff and a lot of really challenging guitar licks that I never would have been open to, but hey, I needed money and a job was a job. Played the guitar that I find most comfortable. This is interesting because it alludes to the fact that certain players have certain styles, whether it's a picking style or the way they hold the guitar and the way they sit. There are a lot of different playing factors and body types and neck types and all these different elements of a guitar that maybe a lot of guitar players who are beginner or intermediate don't even consider when they are choosing their instrument uh, or maybe upgrading to a new instrument. For example, a neck like this has a satin back and it has a really easy accessible upper register of the neck and generally the profile of PRS guitar necks are really comfortable for me. When I am considering a guitar, the first thing I think about is how the neck feels and that's why I gravitate towards PRS guitars because they feel the best to me. The sound is an entirely different uh, subjective thing but the feel cannot be denied. If you have a certain feel that you like, some guitars just aren't going to be as comfortable for you. So having a technical understanding and understanding what it is you like about certain guitars is extremely important. <laughs> practice as if I'm the worst and play as if I'm the best. Practice as if you're under a microscope being studied at every move. Play as if you're playing at Madison Square Garden in front of thousands and thousands of people. Back when I still played video games regularly, I played on the couch and had my guitar hung right above my head. Whenever a loading screen popped up, I pulled the guitar down and noodled around. Yes, this is awesome. No downtime. 
even when you are even when you're just entertaining yourself and playing games and relaxing you can still get some time in on the guitar <laughs> Learning that I can learn electric riffs on acoustic, I think is what this says. Learning acoustic riffs on electric and electric on acoustic, that's a recipe for finger strength 101. And can also force you to examine whatever lick you're trying to learn and figure out the exact easiest way to play it. Always find some way to continue to push yourself. Always be challenging yourself in one way or another. Never get comfortable with where you're at because you could always be better. The self-awareness, the self-actualization, looking in the mirror and saying, what are you? What can you be? What do you want to be? And then saying it and then making it happen. Just love your guitar and player. Believe and you will get better. Self-actualization is real. You look in the mirror and you say something every single day. Eventually it happens. I know many people who have employed this tactic of mental strength and stamina where you just believe something and you just know it's gonna happen and then one day it happens. And I know it seems kind of tacky and cheesy and weird and kind of cultish to say something like that, but before I started my YouTube channel, I saw other people playing the guitar on the internet and I was like, I'm gonna do that. I know how to do what they're doing, I think. I'm gonna do it and I just, started doing it every single day and eventually I'm doing it now. It will work for you too if you give it a shot. I used to feel like I had to push the string down as hard as I can just to make it sound off. Now it seems like sometimes I'm not even touching the strings. Yeah, that's called finger strength. So the more you play, the more dexterous and agile your fingers become. It's like pumping iron. You start lifting 10 pound weights, then 15, 20, 25. And then when you pick up a 10 pound weight, it feels like a two pound weight. The more you play, the more flexible and strong your fingers become. And as a result, it doesn't feel like you have to press down hardly at all because your fingers are so used to that and your calluses are built up as well. So all good things come from practicing consistently. I've been able to get more feel. I don't think about the notes I'm playing as much anymore. So I think the tip here is to kind of leave music theory or technique or anything that you would think about that doesn't have to do with creativity. When you're playing, kind of leave that stuff on the back burner and just feel the notes. This is definitely a way to become better at the guitar when you can separate practice from performance. It's like the old quote, practice as if you're the worst, play as if you're the best. So when you're practicing, really, really grind down and get down to business. But when you're playing, throw all the academic stuff and all the technical stuff out the window and just play. The more you do that and the more you kind of let yourself go when you're in the moment, the more creative of a guitar player you'll become and the closer you'll get to finding your guitar voice. My picking technique improved dramatically. I took my metronome and set it to the highest setting, 250, and practiced my scales to that, usually quarter or eighth notes, and in doing so, my normal tempos, 140 to 170, felt way slow and easier. So this is sort of like throwing yourself into the deep end, jumping in the fire. Uh, I don't know if this is the best way. I, you know what, if it works for you, then it might work for some of you guys out there. Uh, sure, max out your metronome and see if you can play quarter notes. I would start there of just the pentatonic scale maybe, and then see if you can get to eighth notes and run that for like two minutes and then set it to whatever your standard tempo would be and see how it feels. I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to develop technique, but I think it could be a good way to develop endurance. So those two kind of go hand in hand as you get better with technique and slowly gradually become better overall at your endurance because of how much you're developing your technique. Uh, maybe this is like a reverse engineering method to that. <laughs> I'm all 
acoustic now, getting old and folky. This is great advice and it goes both ways. If you're an acoustic player, pick up an electric. If you're an electric guitar player primarily, pick up the acoustic. See how certain limitations reveal themselves and work on turning those into strengths. And then when you return to the alternate instrument, you will have developed new skills without actually playing that instrument that you returned to because of what you developed on the alternate instrument. That's a long way to say versatility is key. Play slow, simple and effective advice. Don't try and start everything at the top of the metronome. Start at the bottom. Or maybe this means play less notes. That way you think about your note choices over a backing track and as a result you develop more meaningful melodies. Actually practice, seriously. I would just play along to songs and get nowhere. So before this person was playing along with songs and getting nowhere apparently, which isn't a bad way to develop your guitar skills, but actually practicing and having a practice routine I think is what this person means and it's definitely great advice because technically if you're just playing along with songs, you're gonna get really good at playing those songs, but from a creative perspective, kind of need a little bit more discipline when it comes to a practice routine to get from one level to the next and gradually develop your skills to become the musician you wanna be. And that's just assuming you want to become a great improviser or a great songwriter. It's just something that you have to do over and over. So maybe your practice routine consists of things that help you reach that goal. So maybe if you're learning a ton of Megadeth and Metallica songs and you just wanna be a riff lord, that's your practice routine. There's nothing wrong with that, but identifying your goals and building little mini goals to reach that big goal, that is the key. Learning songs. So exactly the opposite of what we just said. Uh, instead of just practicing scales and arpeggios and chords and sight reading, learning songs. And this is actually a skill that depending on how you do it, I always recommend not using tabs for anything. If you use your ear to learn songs, you are going to become such a better guitar player. I think a guitar player's most valuable asset is their ear and how well their ability to hear something and play it back or play over it or complement whatever it is they're hearing. How quickly and effectively they can do that, I think really dictates how good a guitar player is. So learning songs by ear is an excellent way to develop that skill. Playing with musicians that are better than me. This reminds me of a quote from a, a head coach in the NFL. Why is he so good at his job? He said, well, I surround myself with people who are smarter than me. And that's a great way to approach music as well, especially when you're assembling a band. The better the band is behind you, assuming you're like the front man of whatever the band is, then the better you are going to sound because you have the absolute best opportunity to do so. You were given this canvas by these great musicians. A great example of this is John Mayer when he recruited Pino Palladino and Steve Jordan to be part of his blues trio and well you can't really get better than that rhythm section so it set him up for success before he really even started and obviously he's a great player in his own right but it might not have been quite as magical without those two monsters. Incorporating my pinky was huge for me. Using it for runs and chords drastically improved my playing. Don't forget about the pinky. Django Reinhardt didn't need it, but hey, none of us are Django Reinhardt. Use all of your digits. Use your thumb to fret notes, just like John Mayer might do or Jimi Hendrix. The more tools you have in your arsenal to use, the greater structures you will build. Watching your videos, thank you very much. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, I have playlists on my YouTube channel. There's music theory, lists, tips, tricks, techniques, habits. There's really the entire gamut of things to learn about the guitar organized in some form or fashion on my YouTube channel if you wanna check it out, if you're new or something. Uh, but otherwise, Thanks for the support. Instead of just practicing songs, I've started developing a style and strumming and progressions influenced by guitars, but at the same time crosses different genres. Being open to multiple genres. And this mirrors the advice that I gave in the video previous to this one, 10 reasons you're not getting better at guitar. Some people kind of get stuck in one path of genre. So are you just a metalhead? Are you just a rock person? Are you just a blues person? I don't think anyone should limit themselves to just one vertical of genre. I think the best guitar players are those who can really play anything. 
and that is going to come from listening to everything. And obviously that's an over exaggeration. You don't have to listen to jazz if you just really hate jazz, but listen to old blues, listen to new metal, listen to prog rock, listen to funk, listen to jazz. I think it's all good music out there and there's always something good to find in any genre. By discovering Kirk Hammett and John Petrucci. Those are two huge influences on myself as well. And just the thought of having an influence and being open to being influenced. Sometimes you can't help it, especially depending on your stage in your guitar life. You will not be able to help being influenced by guitar players that really their style resonates with you. And you'll find yourself playing a lot like them in the earlier days before you kind of develop your own guitar voice. I think every great guitar player has little bits and pieces of their guitar heroes imbued within them and that's healthy. That's what music and artistry is all about taking and changing the things that you like about the people who came before you and making it your own. Still working on gaining speed at the moment, have a few practice routines, but I'm trying to work my way up to Seek and Destroy solo from Metallica. That's my end goal for this quarantine. This is a good tip, having a specific goal, and I already said this a little bit in one of the other tips, but having a specific goal, developing smaller goals to help you reach that, for example, the Seek and Destroy solo has a couple different techniques. Maybe you have your practice routine where you practice alternate picking exercises and speed picking, tremolo picking exercises, and rhythm exercises. So maybe you wanna work on the riff before the solo as well, into the solo. Those are three different exercise, maybe 15 minutes a piece, and then you start on the solo. So you're not only learning the solo and getting that personal goal under your belt, you're also developing as a musician because of what you have to do to get to the stage to be able to play that solo. So you're not just kind of limiting yourself to, all right, I can play the solo really well, but I can't really do anything else with those techniques except play those exact notes. No, you can take the alternate picking exercise and the riffing exercise and the tremolo picking exercise and have those to use in different areas of your musicianship and create something of your own. Buying more guitars because all the guitars I had obviously weren't good enough for me to play well. Now you may be joking, but having a new guitar really makes you want to pick it up. So if you have the means, I'm never going to tell you not to buy a new guitar or a new guitar pedal or a new amp. If there's something that you have your eye on and it's going to get you excited about playing, then go for it. And obviously this joke, what it insinuates is you can't buy skills. It is true you can't buy guitar skills, but you can buy things that sound really nice and look really nice that if you have skills will be really fun to play. Playing like a maniac, almost five hours a day during my teenage years every day, also conservatory. Yeah, I think when I started playing the guitar when I was 16, I wouldn't come home and play video games or just veg out. I would be in my bedroom recording stuff in Audacity and Fruity Loops and playing guitar probably for about this time, maybe four or five hours every day after school, even more on the weekends. I was just ripping through Metallica and ACDC and Led Zeppelin, just blasting that over and over. Yeah, those were good times in a conservatory. So like any sort of music school is always a good idea. You are going to become a better musician if you go to a music school. There's a video on my channel called Should You Go to Music School? Uh, I would definitely recommend checking that out if you have questions about going to a conservatory or a music college. You get out what you put in. If you put in that amount of time, you're gonna be pretty good. Recording myself. This is a great tip. Multiple uh, people who I respect have said the same thing. If you record your practice sessions, you get an unfiltered listen to how you actually sound because if you play something and you think it sounds good that's your perception but it isn't necessarily reality so if you have your phone or if you have some sort of recording setup on your computer next time you sit down to practice just run an exercise and record it and see if it's actually as good as you thought it was and then make adjustments to make it as good as it can possibly be. Taking the time to play even when I really don't want to. This is good advice. Perseverance and discipline. Pick that thing up. And sometimes the thought of not wanting to play 
can immediately be overcome when you do pick up the guitar and start playing something. You just sort of zone out. If you don't feel like playing, maybe you just don't feel like practicing, which is okay. We all go through that. Pick up the guitar if you don't feel like playing and play anything you want. Just get your fingers on the strings. That's the most important piece of advice I can discern from this comment. Put your hands on the guitar every day. That is going to lead you nowhere but good places. Changing strings and calibrating the guitar really inspires me and I play more and learn more. Oh yeah, you have to take care of your guitar. This goes for if your guitar is a $200 guitar or a $2,000 guitar. If you have a well set up instrument and you have pride in it, then you're gonna wanna pick it up more. And by the way, if it's set up well, then you're going to play better than if you would be playing on a guitar that has intonation issues or string noise or fret buzzing. All that stuff can be fixed and addressed. You just have to do it. Attempting to learn my first dream theater song. Good luck with that one. I remember when I tried to learn my first dream theater, actually the first John Petrucci song that I learned was Damage Control. I didn't learn it all the way through, but I learned most of the riff changes throughout that crazy solo section. And I had a ton of fun doing it, and it was well out of my skill range. It still kind of is. I mean, that's out of everyone's skill range for the most part. But the point is, setting an extremely lofty goal can be really healthy. It's like the old saying, shoot for the stars, land on the moon. Picking it up and playing regularly. Consistency is key. If you can play for 15 or 20 minutes every day instead of two hours one day a week and then you don't pick it up for the other six days, the person who plays 15 or 20 minutes every day is going to be a better player than the person who plays sporadically. It's a fact. I've learned when not to play. Sometimes the best thing a guitarist can do is get out of their own way. Phrases should breathe. So this is specific advice about improvising and it's great advice at that. Think about when you are having a conversation. You pause in between thoughts and sentences most of the time, right? You're not talking, 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 talking the entire time. You are talking, breathing, and saying your next thought. So this will not only give you time to consider what it is you're saying, but when you pause, you can figure out what to say next. And maybe that will differentiate your guitar phrases and help you develop your voice on the instrument. Learning bass helped me learn a lot about guitar. And same with the other way around. Both instruments brought out different skills in my playing. I would never have realized without it that transfer over well with each other. Yes, learning other instruments sort of goes along with the piano one, but bass in particular, bass and guitar are very closely related instruments when it comes to the understanding of the fretboard. So bass in itself is a highly complex instrument, despite all the jokes that I make about bass players. You know I'm always just kidding, but bass is actually a really difficult instrument to play convincingly well if you're a guitar player because you have these tendencies that are guitar tendencies. I always find that bass players who are playing guitar sound more like guitar players than when a guitar player plays a bass, if that makes sense. So you can absolutely pick up some skills on the bass and translate them over to the guitar. Primarily, rhythm and timing and knowing when and when not to play and which notes to accent. Anytime I stumble into part of a familiar melody, I see how far I can take it before I get lost. Been helping a lot with learning by ear. This is really interesting advice. I've never really articulated this, but I think I've done something similar where maybe you're just noodling around and you start playing a melody that sounds familiar and you're like, oh, what is that from? I've actually done this with like the Simpsons theme song. I'm playing something in Lydian and I go dun 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 dun. And then I'm like, oh, where does that go? Dun 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 dun. And I kind of try and take that melody as far as I can and then maybe play some Lydian licks outside of that theme song and then come back to the theme song. So this is really cool. It's kind of like playing a game with yourself. By working on my stretches, it used to be a struggle for me to play a chord like a B sus4. My acoustic is tuned down a half step, but now I can play that chord in similar shapes in my sleep. Stretching is so important. Just 15 or 20 seconds before you start playing can really make you perform better immediately. Have you ever picked up a guitar and started playing it and then all of a sudden you're like super tight and you're like, why can't I play? I was playing this really well yesterday. 
uh, why am I not doing well now? So that's usually an indication that you're not warmed up and you're not stretched out, but you eventually do warm up, but it's sort of like going for a jog before you stretch. You're gonna be tight and you might pull a muscle. You probably won't pull a muscle in your hands by not warming up, but if you do stretch and warm up, then you're just gonna kind of bypass that period of inconsistency and tightness. Acknowledging that I don't ever have to be a shred god. It took me three years to break and figure that out. Now I love playing things like Neon and I'm currently practicing Saucy by Polyphia because that track is saucy. This is great advice. You don't have to be somebody else, whether that's a shred god or a blues king or a funk master. You don't have to have these unachievable expectations. Instead, you can just rest assured you're going to become who you're supposed to be if you continue to be consistent in your upkeep and practice and just keep the passion going. You will become the exact guitar player you're supposed to be. If you set goals to reach you know, certain things, I wanna be able to sweep pick this thing, then that's part of the type of guitar player you are and you're already on that path. So just be true to yourself. My display has improved over time. This seems like a little bit of sarcasm, but hey, as a guy who has all of his guitars hanging up on the wall, I can tell you without a doubt, having your guitars readily accessible is much better than having them in the cases. Eye candy to look at, and when I look around, hey, I wanna pick up one of those guitars. If there's a guitar sitting right next to me, I wanna pick it up. Grow that guitar wall as large as you possibly can. Teaching has really helped me improve my playing. I 100% can relate to this. Ever since I started teaching guitar, I have become a better player myself because it forces you to articulate exactly what it is you're doing on the instrument. So when it comes to just playing the guitar, if I only have to use you know, half or 50% of my brain power instead of 100% when I'm playing it and teaching it, then that 50% brain power frees up the other 50% of my brain to really nail that thing or just actually be even more musically heightened than I ever would have been. Teaching is absolutely an awesome way to improve your playing and I think every teacher would tell you that. Went into a room with just myself, my instrument, and someone who knew what they were talking about that had no problem hurting my feelings. Yeah, it sounds like tough love. There are some stories that I've heard about teachers who were very strict in the music world and I don't think that's for everyone. That movie Whiplash sort of attests to this. It was kind of a better movie for people who don't play music than people who do play. It sort of dramatized the entire student-master uh, relationship when it comes to music, but it definitely helps to be humbled by teachers. I will say that. I've had some amazing guitar teachers in my life. I've been in the room, just been like, whoa, that guy's really, 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 really good. I can't do that. So being self-aware and uh, not taking yourself too seriously, that'll take you really far. Understanding more music theory and also age. Yeah, the one thing you can't really speed up is uh, how quickly you age. So with age will come experience. You really can't teach it. It just sort of happens. And I now know a lot of what not to do. I'd say with age comes knowledge and knowing what not to do and how not to practice and what not to worry about. That can really kind of relieve whatever stress you think you have when you're younger. A break. Sometimes you keep going in circles and a break helps me shake off that cycle. By all means, take a break. Set the guitar down. I wouldn't go more than a few days if you can, uh, especially if you're in the beginning phases of the guitar, but yeah, intermediate to advanced players. I mean, I've taken a week off touching a guitar. That's the longest I've ever gone since I became 
serious playing the guitar. I gotta say, maybe after like the third day, I was good. I could have picked it up again after the third day, but definitely some sort of break, even if it's just a day, or even if it's a break where you still play the guitar, but you were gonna practice, but instead you're like, I just can't today. But I, again, going back to putting your hands on the guitar, you'd rather play anything than not play anything if you're still trying to develop, so take that for what it is, but never be afraid to take a break in some form or fashion. Writing my own songs by influence of styles. Writing a John Mayer style song, a Jimmy style song, pop punk style, etc. This is a really cool way to practice and definitely something that I've done inadvertently because I teach lessons on some of these styles. So Habits of John Mayer, Habits of Joe Satriani, Habits of Jimi Hendrix. I've done all three of those videos and I was forced to deep dive into these different guitar players' tendencies and playing t uh, techniques. So with that definitely comes a lot of development by your own accord because you are not only using your ear training to get better at figuring out little nuances, but you're also, again, practicing some of the greatest guitar parts ever and getting a little bit of the mojo into your own playing. Playing my favorite solos and a lot of patience. I love playing my old favorites when I'm just kind of stuck in a rut. I just go default to my old favorites. I'll put on Voodoo Child and just riff over that for 30 minutes straight. ACDC or I'll put on Metallica or something that I'm super comfortable with that is a little bit nostalgic and something that's just ingrained in me. And then the other part of this, which is even more important, is patience. That translates to developing any skill. The more patience you have, then the more discipline you'll be willing to inject into your practice. And well, patience is a virtue. Crank up the gain, hide the mistakes. Yes, distortion and delay, my child. But seriously, crank up the gain, hide the mistakes. Guitar's supposed to be fun. If you're not having fun, why are you doing it? Crank up the gain, hide the mistakes, pretend you're a guitar god. It's not necessarily the best way to practice, but it is something that every single guitar player must do from time to time. Now, obviously there've been comments in the past I've seen where people argue against me saying, you can't always practice on clean. What if the song calls for high gain and you have to worry about string noise? Yeah, duh, of course, whatever the technique is, have the appropriate guitar tone, but when it comes to physical technique, alternate picking, legato, anything like that, if you can do that on a clean tone, when you turn on the distortion, you're not gonna have trouble with string noise. String noise happens regardless if you have distortion on or not, and if your guitar is feeding back because you have so much gain, then that's too much gain. You shouldn't have so much gain that you have to control the feedback at every waking moment. So a little bit of gain is, is great and I usually have like the gain on two and a half or three and my volume pot rolled down so I can do the clean stuff and then when I wanna see where I'm at, I'll put on a little bit of that masking gain and go from there. Being willing to struggle. When I allow myself to fail on songs and sound terrible, instead of just playing the same things I've known for years, I find I always come out with a stronger technique to add to my playing. Being willing to struggle, that willingness to fail and the knowing that you will fail, I think is an important mental strength that musicians should have and on guitar, it's just like, all right, I know I'm not gonna play this well, but let me just put it on and go for it. Sometimes you just gotta go for it and rip through the mistakes and just try and stay in time. That's actually how I learned to sight read. I would look at a piece of music and I would go through it and just fumble through it and hit as many correct notes as I could and try and play the rhythms. And even if it's the wrong note, I'm trying to hit the rhythms and I would go through the same piece of music again and then again and then again. And it would get better each time because I was forcing myself to finish instead of just stopping when I messed up. Build a playlist of songs you wanna learn and lesson videos you find useful. Label it learn every time you have learned a song on the list move to the next list. Being organized is the key to having a strong practice regimen and this is a great recommendation using the playlist element of YouTube or Spotify, iTunes and eliminating the need to look around for what to practice next. You don't even have to think. Well, there you have it, my friends. I hope you 
took some valuable knowledge from your peers in this video. Thanks again for your support. Thanks to American Musical Supply for hooking me up with this awesome new guitar. Check them out. There's a link down below for any gear needs you may have. And until next time, keep shredding. <laughs>